Welcome to Sand City Sports. I am your host, the Cape Cod Kid, artist formerly known as Andre King, and we are back again to bring you all the sports and current events news stories that you need to know. Folks, we've discussed this in previous episodes. I got to get back to it. Uh, your, your boy loves the summer season. I enjoy the warm environs. And we are filming today, September 23rd, 2019, uh, the last day of summer or the first day of fall. Either or, uh, the fact of the matter is uh, the seasons are, are definitely changing. And uh, here in Taurus Town, we are getting ready uh, for the off season, uh, the, the, the colder season, the cooler season. Uh, there's a little tear. Can't see it right now, you know, but internally, you know, I, I might look fine on the outside, but internally I'm, I'm crying a little bit uh, a, as we bid uh, farewell to the season that was. Summer season, I always enjoy it, particularly here uh, on Cape Cod. You know, a lot of great things going on. Uh, but, you know, when the fall begins, those of us who are sports fanatics, uh, we, we do have quite a few things to look forward to. The NFL season is uh, in full swing uh, after week three, uh, which will conclude tonight with who do we got Monday Night Football? We have the we have the Bears, and escapes my memory. We'll get it up there for you on the screen. I, I know for a fact the Bears are playing because the Bears. Who are they facing off against? Yeah, escapes my mind. I can't I can't I can't gather it now. But I have one guy going on my fantasy team, my uh, arch rival, uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Cahill. He he has Khalil Mack and uh, the Bears running back going, so it doesn't look great for me. I, I have a defensive player. We have an IDP league, which I think is super cool, frankly. I think uh, IDP is much better uh, than just having a defense, you know, be, you being able to pick four defensive guys, give the league some balance. Uh, but that will conclude week three, so we have football as we go into the fall season. And then also, uh, we have basketball coming up. Training camp, I believe, is going to start next week. Uh, because our season starts in mid-October, uh, again, under the leadership of Adam Silver. You know, keep, uh, you know, pushing that start date forward. You know, we love that start date. used to be closer to Halloween. Now it's in mid-October. And uh, that's just an outstanding thing for people who uh, might have a touch of seasonal depression like me. It's also really cool for the players uh, in that that allows for them to have a week off after the All-Star break and less back-to-backs over the course of the season. NBA season. So the seasons are changing, uh, but we have some great sports seasons. Didn't even mention baseball, which is going to the playoffs. Red Sox didn't do great, uh, which is, uh, yeah, well, we, we touch on that a bit. Uh, but nothing like October baseball. So that's also a super cool thing uh, going into the fall. All right, that established. Uh, we got plenty to get into. And we will start uh, where we've been starting. Uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks, you know, with this Antonio Brown saga. So uh, last Friday, Bill Belichick had a somewhat contentious press conference, which is not completely out of line for Bill. You know, th th this happens. That's just kind of how he gets down. You know, it's his style. Uh, it, it works for him, you know, and it works for the Patriots, six Super Bowl rings. Uh, would other people be able to get away with it? Uh, probably not. You know, but success covers you know, a myriad of character flaws, you know, so when you're successful, you can, in many respects, you know, get, you know, obviously Bill's not doing anything way out of bounds, you know, by being surly with his press availability, but, you know, had it been a less successful coach, you know, it, it, that would be something that would really irk people, you know, and, and grind their nerves, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, if they were continue to have moderate success, that might be something to get somebody fired. You know, with Bill, you know, you just got to, you know, take it, you know, in stride, you know, with a grain of salt. He gets the opportunity to be that way. Uh, but, you know, he, he had a contentious press conference last Friday, you know, and he also had another uh, contentious interview on Sunday, you know, speaking of which. But, you know, then the bombshell, uh, which, again, turned the entire sports uh, media universe on its head, was that Antonio Brown was released uh, by the Patriots last Friday, and, uh, you know, it just, for sports media people, Antonio Brown is the gift that just keeps on giving. You, you have endless 
storylines, you know, with endless routes that you can take each uh, new development. It's, you know, he's, you know, responsible for, for more careers in media, you know, than I, than I think he knows. But let's look at this. Did the Patriots make the right decision to release Antonio Brown last Friday? I believe they did. Reason being is that I stood by and, and, and I stand by those who are accused of crimes. They are innocent until proven guilty. When the first allegation came out, this would be, he came to the Patriots, I think that was Saturday, September 7th. You know, so this is Monday, September 9th. The first allegation comes out. Uh, and, you know, again, going back and forth. But for me, Antonio Brown's innocent until proven guilty. That case will run its course. Until we get a resolution, uh, he has the right to, to earn a living, which is what he was doing. So he plays uh, week one, no, week, week two, rather, uh, for the Patriots, and, and, and he does very well. Monday the 16th, a new allegation from a second accuser. My stance remains the same. Antonio Brown is innocent until proven guilty, has the right to earn a living. And so that was the approach the Patriots took. I was, thought they were 100% right. Uh, support them a thousand percent on that for the aforementioned reasons. Friday, Antonio Brown was at practice, you know, getting ready for, you know, week uh, three uh, against the Jets, you know, second ball game for him. And, uh, you know, the questions were continuing to uh, pour in, you know, the tsunami uh, went on, as you would expect when you have a player, you know, with the off the field Concerns that Antonio Brown has, fine. We'll address that. Those two investigations are running their course. And once again, Antonio Brown has not been found guilty of anything. So he's a football player for the Patriots, and he's a darn good one. Sports Illustrated article came out on Wednesday, which established that Antonio Brown did, in fact, now, again, this has not been disputed, so I'm going to report it as it's been reported and, and, and where we're at today, and then I'll look in, you know, I'm going to keep on this. It established that Antonio Brown sent a text message to the second accuser, which included, I believe it was nine people, stating, among other things, that he believed this individual was interested in money. There was a monetary motive for this accusation. He stated that this woman uh, was in a difficult financial situation. Uh, he, he stated that in, in uh, terms that were not the most respectful. He included this woman's children, pictures of her children within this group text thread. Um, and, you know, his lawyer was included in the thread. You know, some of his uh, comp personal confidants uh, were, were included in this thread. You know, but, the, but those are the main three things. He said he believes her allegations are motivated by personal financial gain. By the way, uh, the second accuser uh, went directly to the NFL, uh, did not file a civil suit seeking financial damages, and has not filed a police report as well. You know, she's somebody that wanted to simply add uh, her experience as she saw it to uh, the public record now. You know, we have the one allegation which is in civil court. Uh, but to be clear, the second accuser was not seeking financial damages in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but Antonio Brown said that in this uh, group text. Pointed out, you know, the woman may or may not, you know, in his view, you know, she's dealing with certain financial distress. Pointed that out in the way that he did it. 
best of my knowledge, was not the most respectful. And then, you know, he included a picture, you know, of this woman with her children. You know, and I believe, you know, alleged that because of her financial situation, she was not taking care of her children to the best of her ability. All right, folks, made it clear. Uh, the allegations, first one in civil court, second one, you know, an accusation of sexual misconduct, Tony Brown, innocent until proven guilty. Uh, my view on that is ironclad. My view on these text messages and whether they rise as this woman's attorney has stated, whether these new text messages rise to the level of harassment and or intimidation, my view on that is also ironclad. And it is that, yes, they do. For me, period, end of story, these text messages are out of bounds. This is conduct unbecoming if you're talking about the NFL. And if you're talking about our legal system, this could possibly be intimidation and harassment. I believe that there is probable cause based on these text messages to establish that. As far as I'm concerned, Antonio Brown all the way 100% wrong for sending this all the way wrong. And I got to get into it, okay? Because when I, when I first heard this, I couldn't believe it, okay? Somebody who's under the pressure of Antonio Brown, somebody with that much heat. You know, you watch the you know, crime movies, you know, and the, you know, the, the language, you know, you know, you know somebody, you know, the, the heat is on so-and-so, you know, the different whatever series, you know, the, the coppers are, are closing in, you know, he's under, you know, and this, but the, the, the temperature for Antonio Brown, you know, it's like you're nearing the sun in terms of the, from law enforcement, it's just across the board, you, you know, Antonio Brown in the world of sports, you're basically public enemy number one. And there's, you know, this information age, there's not very many people you know, definitely in the United States, you know, this, this is a major storyline internationally. So I could not believe, I couldn't believe for the life of me that Antonio Brown would himself send a text message, which can be clearly established, proven, validated, the whole nine yards. Okay, this is, there's no disputing, this is evidence. You know, the legal term, you know, admissible evidence. It's just a hundred, you know, you can't get, you can't get around it. Uh, it's, it, you know, you know, history teacher in me, excuse me. A lot of these criminal cases come down to the Fourth Amendment. Excuse me again. Fourth Amendment, ladies and gentlemen, which you probably already knew, you know, protects against unreasonable search and seizure. The government and the law enforcement agencies that support the system of government, they need probable cause to search your person and to seize your property. Right? It has to exist. All right. And so again, back to Antonio, like in, in the legal system, this is where that this is a major point in these cases. You know, do we have probable cause to continue to, to, to start an investigation, to continue an investigation, and to seek this person's uh, private property, so on and forth. You are protected under the Constitution. Unreasonable search and seizure is illegal. So I couldn't believe you know, that Antonio Brown, again, would himself send messages which clearly provide the probable cause to establish and continue both a criminal and civil investigation. I, when I first, no, that, that's not what happened, okay? For me, it was, this is what happened. This is what I thought happened. I thought this woman's attorney sent Antonio Brown's attorney this group text. It's 
stating whatever it is that lawyers talk about at the beginning of a case. Whatever legalese lawyers talk, I didn't go to law school. Okay, I stayed at Holly and Express. All right, I think that makes me a little bit smarter, but I'm not a lawyer. Okay, but I do know that lawyers communicate with each other, particularly at the beginning of a, of, of a case and then throughout the, ca the course of the case in terms of evidence and procedures on and on and on. Okay, this is normal. So for me, I'm saying this woman's lawyer sent a group, a text to Antonio Brown's lawyer in a group text format to A, establish some of the facts of uh, this emerging case, and then B, the ulterior motive for me yeah. <laughs> was that this attorney was hoping deeply, I'm not even gonna get too spirit, but this hoping that Antonio Brown himself would respond in this group text there in unprofessional fashion, thereby providing that probable cause to bolster her client's case so they can move forward. That's how I thought this happened. You know, put the bait in the water, Antonio Brown being a volatile guy, have him go ahead and chomp on that bait, and then here we go. That's not how it happened, come to find out. No, Antonio Brown himself went down this slippery slope and uh, is in the process of ending up all the way at the bottom of that steep hill, okay? The NFL, in my view, will be placing Antonio Brown on the exempt list in the near future. I believe the Patriots released him because they could clearly see this coming reality. It has not happened, so he would have definitely been able to play in week three, uh, but for me, it's 100%, and we'll touch back on this next week, that Antonio Brown will be on the exempt list at least before uh, week four begins this coming Sunday. It's, he's going to be there, okay? Because you now have concrete evidence of conduct unbecoming in terms of the NFL's uh, language and codes and standards, uh, and then also harassment, if not intimidation, based on this uh, group text that he sent out. It, ironclad is my view on that. As I've said, you know, uh, in line with my, my, my views on innocent until proven guilty. And so because of that, you know, Antonio Brown's gonna be on the exempt list uh, for, and again, as this, he's gonna be on the exempt list for a while. Sometimes you get put in the exempt list for a game or two, you know, maybe three or four, um, but again, this tornado that surrounds Antonio Brown's football talent that continues to grow week by week, uh, once he is on the exempt list, he, he, he will probably be there for uh, the majority of the season, if, if not the entire season. He's not going to, you know, if I, you know, I, I don't think just on the exempt list alone, you know, he will be eligible to play football in uh, the 2019 season. Uh, you know, I know we're gonna we're gonna uh, conclude this Antonio Brown uh, segment. You know, we're probably gonna have another segment next week. That that's just the way it's going. But Antonio Brown <laughs> woke woke up on the wrong side of the bed on Sunday morning. Woke up on the wrong side of the bed. We we, we all do this. I maybe more than most. I'm not much of a morning person. Much more of a night owl. That's just how I get down. Uh, you know, I, I gotta get up early. You know, and you gotta. Do what you have to do in the morning, I, I, I can be up early. That's one of these things, different people. For me, if I have to be somewhere in the morning, you know, even two, three hours of sleep, I can get back up, you know, and then you can kind of power through and then midway through the day around 12 noon, that's when you hit that wall and you're in trouble and you realize you should've got your good sleep. Uh, but I go through that a lot, you know, being, being the night owl. Uh, where, where, where am I going with this? So Antonio Brown woke up on the wrong side of the bed on Monday, uh, but different than most people when they woke up, wake up on the wrong side of the bed, uh, we, we don't run to social media. Okay, we growl, you know, we, 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 we're gonna be surly. 
we're gonna be, uh, you know, maybe caustic, whatever, with the people around us in our household. I mean, not, you know, me probably I just try to separate myself. Can't really be around people until I, you know, I have to go through that process, you know, to just get up to speed, you know, because if, if you do encounter me, you know, there's gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna be agreeable, to say the least. Most people don't run social media when they're in that mood. Antonio Brown ran social media, excuse me, on Sunday morning, and he had a whole lot to say about a lot of folks. He called out Robert Kraft, you know, highlighted his issue in Florida at the massage parlor. He called out Ben Roethlisberger, highlighted the allegations of sexual misconduct that are five plus years ago, okay? And he called out Shannon Sharp, you know, which was surprising to many and pointed out that he had been accused of sexual, sexual misconduct some years ago. And so again, Sunday morning, uh, going into another great week of, of football games, what was the dominant narrative? Leading up to those games, once again, uh, Antonio Brown. I, I have to deconstruct this, it, it, it has to be broken down. Okay, it might, you know, we might have to take some, you know, a little bit of time away from some other things or power through them, we'll, we'll do that. It, 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 it is what it is, you know? Okay, we'll, we'll start with my main man, you know, my homeboy, Shannon Sharp. Huge fan of Undisputed and the outstanding work uh, that he and Skip Bayless uh, have done, are doing, so on and forth. Their, their show is outstanding. One of the many outstanding shows that we, there's just a number of outstanding shows. Okay, you know, whether you're uh, Undisputed or First Take, both great shows. You know, whether you're Speak For Yourself or Jalen Jacoby, both great shows. Okay, High Noon, uh, Around the Horn, Pardon the Interruption, Highly Questionable, Lock It In, Fox, ESPN, just great content. Across the board, love them all. Okay, but back to Shannon Sharp, you know, I'm a fan. And, and we need to, so, so that was really surprising to me. Why is he gonna attack Shannon? What is, what, what, what's the, you know, the background for this? I had to look into it. Okay. Shannon Sharp is an NFL Hall of Famer. He's a three-time Super Bowl champion. And he's an outstanding sportscaster. The man, uh, he has swagger. He has sway, he has charisma. But when it comes to football in particular, this man knows his business. And he's a straight shooter, okay? He, when you do right, Shannon Sharp will praise you and encourage you and support you and, you know, uh, to, to the 10th the degree. And the same is true when you do wrong. Doesn't matter who you are. Shannon Sharp, huge LeBron uh, guy, LeBron fan, that's it, you know. And so he's a LeBron supporter and goes to bat Le for LeBron, so on and forth. And him and, you know, he's on one side, Skip Bayless on the other side. You know, Skip Bayless loves Tom Brady, Shannon's on the other side of that, you know, and they just go back and forth. Okay, but again, when LeBron does things, you know, that, that, that Shannon takes issue with, he states it clearly, directly, you know, and he backs up his arguments. You know, so he's not a homer. You know, he's not, you know, I, I don't think he would be guilty of, you know, whatever you want to say, nepotism, you know, favoritism. No. Uh, that, that's not Shannon Sharp's character. Okay, so as in, so here is what escalated the situation. Shannon Sharp's view and, and why he is upset with Antonio, and he's been very critical, frankly, of Antonio Brown, you know, is, but the overarching reason why Shannon Sharp is critical is this. The NFL players are going in for a new collective bargaining agreement in 2021, okay? There are huge issues with this current CBA. The powers that Roger Goodell has as a commissioner. The excessive powers is an issue. The below market rookie scale, which places rookie players, highly talented rookie players, we got plenty of time, we're moving and grooving here, okay? Highly talented rookie players in a position where they cannot get their market value. The Melvin Gordons, the Ezekiel Elliott's, the Jalen Ramsey. Huge problem. Particularly for a game that's un as unforgiving as the NFL. Okay, and so Shannon Sharp's issue with Antonio Brown 
centers around the fact that when the players go in for these fierce, no holds bar, two men enter, one man leave negotiations with the NFL. What the NFL? Shout out to my man. We got Angel Robinson back in the building. I'm thrilled to see him. I was wondering when he was going to be. I was hoping he was going to be here today. He does a great job with the drop, okay? He's been very busy this summer. Man's been very busy doing a ton of events. We haven't seen him, but now that we're going into the fall season, we're thrilled to see him back, okay? And I'm going to talk to him once the episode is over. This is great because he hasn't been here. He's back. I was wondering who's back there, okay? So that's great, okay? You definitely go check out the drop, and he does outstanding work, okay? But with Shannon Sharp, his issue with, his, uh, with Antonio Brown is... Antonio Brown's antics do not just affect Antonio, they affect the players overall. And this is one of the things that the owners are going to point to when they go into these negotiations to say, this is why you cannot get guaranteed contracts. This is why the rookie wage scale has to stay where it is. Okay? Because if we give players guaranteed money, like Antonio Brown, what's going to be the return for us? It's not going to work. This is this is his issue with Antonio Brown. Whether you know, and, and, okay. So Antonio Brown was saying what he, you know, he's going, you know, and people we couldn't understand. People, you know, major sports commentators and figures were just as baffled as I am as to why Antonio Brown himself would send this text to the second accuser and basically tar feather, you know, he, you know. He did himself in. He did himself in for all intents and purposes. And so, within this, Shannon Sharp on Saturday called Antonio Brown a clown. Said he's a clown. His cl or he said, I think he said, and somebody, you know, on social media, we go back and forth, and it's a beautiful thing, it's a wonderful thing. Okay? Because the somebodies, yeah. <laughs> all right, and the people like myself who aren't as well known, they get a chance to interact and go back and forth, okay? So they, they you know, they put, and, 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 we, and, and it raises the level. There's more information. It's a great thing. So people responded to Shannon Sharp and said, you know, some, you're out of, line, out of line for calling Antonio Brown a clown. And then Shannon Sharp clarified. He said, I'm not calling him a clown. I'm saying his behavior is clownish. That was Saturday night. Apparently, Antonio Brown got wind of this. Because on Sunday, you had the early morning social media tirade. So that's how the back and forth between them got going, escalated. By the way, Shannon Sharp, as you know, those who watched the show, we knew that he was hosting the red carpet for the Emmys last night, which was a very big deal. The Emmys itself and then Shannon Sharp's participation, that was a very big deal, okay? And so that, you know what I mean? So that, also throw that in the mix. We have a, a great day of NFL football. We have the Emmys, you know, which we have some great football people participating in. And this is all now kind of thrown once, you know, and caught up in this Antonio Brown blender. All right. How did it uh, resolve itself? Well, first of all, I haven't seen Undisputed today. I'm certainly going to watch it this evening. So uh, we will have for you next week, you know, what Shannon Sharp's full response to Antonio Brown is. Next, you know, um, you, you know, you, you don't do yourselves any favors. We were all the people, we all knew about Ben Roethlisberger and, and Robert Kraft's situations. So Antonio Brown, you know, slinging mud at them did really nothing to them. It, it just made him look worse and made essentially all three of these individuals sympathetic figures in the public eye. Now, Shannon Sharp has his own show, so he's going to be able to respond fully, you know, and, and, and for the national audience. Uh, but it, it, it's just, again, you know, and then today, uh, Antonio Brown, or this might have been yesterday as well, he said that, you know, now at the, you know, he's done with the NFL, doesn't want to be in the NFL, you know. We know Antonio Brown is an NFL star. You know, his, at the end of yesterday's tirade, I believe, was him, him saying that he's done with the NFL. Okay, so who knows what that means. And then today, 
don't know if it's being Antonio Brown or his representation, he has established that he is going to re-enroll in, in school. You know, he's, you know, didn't graduate from Central Michigan, has some credits, he's gonna take some class at Central Michigan and that's gonna be his focus. Well, that I can support, okay? Gone long on this, I, I don't care. It needs to be addressed. Antonio Brown, the man, you need to take a step away and get yourself right. But for the grace of God, there go I. That's what one of my professors at college used to always say and stuck with me. So who am I? You know, we always, oh, if you had this money, you know, if I was in, had Antonio Brown's money and privileges, I might just be just as bad as Antonio Brown. I hope that, I like to think that I won't be, but I, I, I might be, okay? But at the end of the day, the fact of the matter is, you know, when you're spiraling like he's spiraling, you need to take a step back, take a step away, and, and, and get yourself right. And so whether it's going back to school, if he's doing that, I, I hope, you know, that is uh, the course that he takes. There. Folks, that's gonna do it. Go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe as you feel the needs. I am your host. Got a little, little you know, okay. I am your host, the Cape Cod Kid, artist formerly known as Andre King. We wanna thank you from the body of our hearts for tuning in to San City Sports, and we will see you here back again the next time. So do today ourselves Just in the Mars pain we feel Yes, yeah, sometimes we do hate ourselves But each day we try to retake ourselves So yes, we peace the soul do today ourselves Just in the Mars pain we feel Yes, yeah, sometimes we do hate ourselves But each day we try to embrace ourselves Yeah